Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be here this morning in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yesterday, we were riding down the road, and the weatherman said, it's going to be cloudy all day. And the sun was out shining beautifully. He did not check with the person who controls the weather. We have to know that when we come here, God is the one that's in control always. Regardless of the situation, he's in control. Sometimes I'm doubtful, sometimes I'm worried, but he's in control, so why should I be that way? Why should I be discouraged? No reason at all. We come to worship you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because we're meeting here in your house that you are already sitting, waiting for us to come. And we know that you have something you want us to know and to understand and to share with others. Yesterday, when the uh, seniors were out feeding people on the street, we saw many men and women that needed attention. God sent us his way to their places to give them some attention. But we know that all of us have something we need to do. And before I back into my seat, we have to thank the brothers for this wonderful job they did on waxing and cleaning these floors. It, it looks, looks great. It's wonderful to see when men come together and do things that they are capable of doing. And God always gifts us with the talent and the ability to do that. Let us go back to what is important, and that's the hearing the word of God. So let's go to church. If you would, please, turn to 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. 
And once you have it, if you're able to stand, please stand. First Peter chapter three, verses twelve through seventeen. But the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is it that he that will harm you if you be followers that which is a good? But and if you suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. And be ye not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason for your hope, that is, you with the seek and meek and fear. Having a good conscience that whether they speak evil of you or evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse you, accuse your good conversation in Christ. But if it is better that the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well doing than for evil doing. First Peter chapter three verses twelve through seventeen. God bless his word. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this day, Heavenly Father. Thank you for waking us up, Heavenly Father, clothing in our right mind, reasonable portion, health and strength. Because, Heavenly Father, you are worthy to be praised. And we just thank you. Thank you for everything you have done. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this church that stands on the corner of Jane and Payne. I ask you, Heavenly Father, bless our pastor, bless his wife by his side. Heavenly Father, bless his family. Heavenly Father, I ask you to bless each and every member in this church. Heavenly Father, one by one. You know their needs, Heavenly Father. You know what they need, Heavenly Father. And Heavenly Father, please strengthen each and every one of them. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing me back to this place one more time, Amen. Heavenly Father. I thank you, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, you didn't have to do it, but you did. And we just praise you for everything. We ask you to bless our musicians, bless our choir, uh, Heavenly Father, and bless each and every person here. Please, Heavenly Father, bless our pastor as he imports the, imports the message that you have given him, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for everything. Thank you for just being God all by yourself. Je cleanse us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Bless this city as a whole. And, gov and Heavenly Father, just guide us through each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And all of God's people said. Amen. 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 We thank God for those of you that are worshiping with us in the in-person service. Thanks be to God to those who are joining us via our social media platform. We thank God for you. We kind of see you coming across, so we thank God for you being with us. Let us uh, be remindful that this is the last celebrated week of Black History Month, but Black History is not a month. It's a lifestyle. Yes, yes. So let us continue to celebrate uh, throughout the entire the entire year. I want to uh, let you know that the Packers Conference was extraordinarily an outstanding worship experience. Uh, Amen. 
We thank God for those of us that participated in our pastor's conference. Dr. Tellis Chapman was and is an outstanding uh, preacher, speaker. Dr. Colbert lectured us and was extremely, extremely good. Uh, the choir, which two of our members participated, they were off the chain. They were really off the chain. So we thank God for all that has taken place. Now, on this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, March the 1st, 7 p.m., we're worshiping with cable, and the entire church is invited to come. Our praise team will be there. Our musicians will be there. And I'm asking you to be there 7 p.m. at Cable Baptist Church, 314 Wenzel. And uh, I need to just kind of give a show of hands if you're going to be able to make it. If you think you're going to be able to make it, they're going to prepare a light meal for us. And I just need to give them some kind of idea of, of, of the folks that are, that, that the number of folks that might show up from there as well. So please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to you being with us on Wednesday, 7 p.m. at the Cable Missionary Baptist Church, 314 Wenzel Street. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us keep our sick and shut in in our prayers. Uh, uh, Arnold Patisse uh, is in Audubon, and uh, we want to continue to get him, keep him lifted uh, in, in our prayers. We're delighted to see Reverend David Dow with us this morning. Amen. 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 He was ailing a little last week, but we're thankful uh, for, for him being in the house today. Let Thank us you. continue to pray for those that are bereaving, those that have lost loved ones, those that are going through this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. We want you to know that we will keep you lifted in prayer. Amen. I think that is all. Let me echo what Reverend Williams said concerning the men on the floor. Uh, thank you. I was here watching them do what they do, and my goodness, uh, it was, I guess, I don't know what it was, but it was thick, and they had to duff and duff and duff, but they, they got it up, and so we're thankful for those who done those floors. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. All right. If I'm not forgetting anything, let me give a special shout out to the men who are also working very hard to make sure that these things are getting done. Amen.
Come on, if you want to worship him. Come on and give God some praise if you want to worship him because he's worthy to be praised. We honor God. We serve him. We lift his most holy and righteous name. It is just good to be here. And uh, we thank God that he's allowed us to be in the house one more time. As much as I appreciate what God has permitted and what he allows for us to have a platform to reach those via the, the social media, our Facebook live channel, our YouTube channel, our website, uh, I want to share that as much as we appreciate that and as much as those who join us because for whatever reasons they can't get here. The one thing that you won't get via the social media platform is the atmosphere of being together. And, uh, and I, I'm not putting down the virtual church. I'm just saying that uh, if you can be here, you need to be here because what you're missing is the atmosphere of brothers and sisters being together. But then on, on the other hand, thank God for uh, the social media platform that we might reach those for whatever reasons that are unable to make it. Amen? Amen. We don't want to forget, I think, and I want to double check to be sure, uh, a dear friend and brother, uh, fellow preacher and former pastor, uh, the Reverend J. O. Quentin Jr., past and his funeral. I, I thought it was Tuesday, but let's make sure we don't want to give out any information. Then I was told it was Monday, but let's, let's make sure. It's going to be at Burnett Avenue. I do know that, but we want to make sure of the date. And we want to keep the Clinton and family in our prayers. Uh, amen. Sister Karen and I was talking this morning, and you know, it's somebody else right now, but it could be you or I this afternoon. And so uh, 
we all stand in the need of prayer. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you would be so kind to make your way, let's see, uh, February the 27th, that's tomorrow. That's tomorrow, that's tomorrow, but tomorrow's the 27th, right? Tomorrow, 10 a.m., the wake to noon service will follow at the Burnett Avenue. Thank you, Sister Wayne team. Uh, we don't want to give out information that is not correct. All right. If you have your Bibles, find your way again to the first epistle that is penned by the prophet Peter. Amen. The first epistle penned by the prophet Peter. In other words, first Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. First Peter chapter three. When you find it, say I got it. If you don't have it, say I'm looking for it, and I will wait on you. First Peter chapter three. I just want to lift one verse in your hearing um, this morning, and that is verse number 18. First Peter chapter three, verse number 18. Reading from the New International Version of the Bible, we find these words. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive in the spirit. That's enough. Pray with me. God, how we love you, we adore you, we magnify your most holy and righteous name. Here we are again, just a few of your believing children with our heads bowed down and our hearts lifted up towards glory, asking that you would grip us, grab us, hold us, hug us, rock us in the cradle of your arms, God, even to the point that we can lay our head upon your chest and hear and feel the beat of your heart. As always, God, we ask that you would bind the devil. Don't allow him to interfere nor interrupt with this time that you have preordained for us to be together. And God, if we have anything in our hearts that should not be there, I pray that you would move it as far as the east is from the west. And then God, give me your preacher what I need for this preaching moment. I ask it all in the mighty, miraculous, and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. And all of God's people said, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. But for a few moments this morning, I want to talk to us from the subject, he did it for you. He did it for, for you. He did it for you. My grandmother used to say, people don't have to be nice. But when they are nice, they don't have to be nice to you. But if they're nice to you, the least you could do is say, thank you. <laughs> Grandmother knew that this was a common courtesy that we uh, should have for one another. Somebody is nice to you. They don't have to be nice to you. They've done something for you. They don't have to do anything for you. They had you on their mind and prayed for you. They did not have to pray for you. They thought of you and your family in a major and positive way. They did not have to do those type of things, but the reality is that if somebody is nice to you, the least you could do is say thank you. Uh, to, to not show your appreciation for somebody who has done nice things for you, uh, if you let me call it, I would say that that, uh, that borders right on being sinful because it borders on being unappreciative. And if you're not appreciative of what God places in your path so that it will be a blessing to you, then I call that uh, sinful. If uh, God sent somebody to help you along the way. You ought to at least say 
thank you. If God makes sure that you have what you need, you ought to at least say thank you. If God gives you a portion of health and strength and enables you to get up and go to work so that you can pay your bills, you ought to at least say thank you. If you can breathe in and out without coughing on every other breath, you ought to go ahead and tell the Lord uh, Thank you. If you are in your right mind, you're not uh, confused, you're not babbling all over the place, you ought to at least say thank you. If God is making ways out of no ways, if uh, he is blessing you in spite of you, if he's giving you everything you need, even if you don't have everything you want, you ought to, to say thank you. I'm simply trying to say that when God does what God does, then the least that we could do is to say thank you. If it is expected for us to say thank you to somebody because they're nice to us, how much more should we say thank you to the God who makes us everything we are? After all, the Bible says that it is in him that we live and breathe and have our being. In other words, you ought to get up in the morning telling the Lord, thank you. Uh, for letting you sleep all night long. You ought to get up in the morning and tell the Lord, thank you, because nobody broke in on you. You ought to get up in the morning and tell the Lord, thank you, because your house didn't catch on fire. You ought to get up in the morning and tell the Lord, thank you, because you are at least awoke for another day. And if God will open my eyes then and give me strength to stand on my feet, then I, I think I can make it through the day. Is there anybody in here besides me and Daryl that don't mind telling the Lord thank you for the marvelous wake works that he has done in our lives? I just come by to help us and I'm almost through to, to understand that he did it for you. We can complain all we want but he still did it for us. We can act unappreciative if we want to but God did it for us. What did God do for us? He brought us back to God. Uh, that's all I come to say. Uh, I, 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 I know he brought us, he brought us back to God. Peter is writing at a time when the church, when those who were followers of Christ, who those who were called the Christian because they were following Christ, they were being persecuted for the mere fact that they were following Christ. Isn't that something? Not because they beat somebody up, not because they stole from somebody, but because of what they believe. And I come by to tell you that if your belief in Jesus is strong enough, somebody is wanting to do harm unto you. If your belief in God is strong enough, to, it causes you to live a life that is pleasing to God, somebody is not going to like you. If you uh, believe in God's strong enough that you decide that you're not going to hang out with those that you used to hang out with because their life don't reflect what God is doing in your life, somebody is going to be upset with you and they will begin to treat you in a different manner, in a different way. But i come to tell you that Peter wrote to tell and encourage those who were followers of Christ uh, that you're going to suffer but hang in there. They're going to mistreat you but hang in there. They're going to talk about you, but hang in there because you got to understand that it was Christ who died, that he died so that you could get back to, to, to God. I want to tell us that it all started many years before when God created the heavens and the earth and he put man in a garden and he breathed into the, the nostrils of man the breath of life. He put the man to sleep, uh, took his rib and made uh, Eve and told them to occupy the garden but he also instructed them not to eat from the tree that was in the center uh, of the garden and they did just what God told them not to do and it was at that point that they were separated from God. Uh, can I help you? Because I'm trying to get up out of here. You see from that point forward sin had been introduced and God and sin can't mix and since God and sin can't 
became mixed, then we were separated. God's here. We can't get to him uh, because we are sinful people. Uh, sin and God is like oil and water. I'm here to tell you that it just don't mix. And so uh, God tried a couple of things. He even tried Noah. Peter mentions Noah later on in that chapter. He even got Noah to try and get the people to believe, but only eight of them uh, uh, believed, and they were the only ones that was left because everybody else got washed away in a flood where it rained 40 days and 40 nights. And then God sent Abraham uh, thinking maybe Abraham might be the one to do it, but he turns out to be a liar. And then he sent Isaac. Well, Isaac couldn't do it. Jacob, he was a trickster. He couldn't do it. David was a murderer and he couldn't do it. And the list goes on until Jesus stood up in glory. If I can use my uh, uh, my imagination and said, since God, you sent all these other folk and they couldn't get it done. And here am I, send me. And he came. And he died. And he was buried. And he got up. And the Bible says that Peter wrote when the people were being persecuted that Jesus died for your sin. Not only did he die for your sin, uh, he died in your place. And not only did he die in your place, he died to bring you and I back to God. That's the whole little message that I got here for us this morning. Let me expound upon those three things, and I'm going to get out of your way. First, you got to understand that he died once because he didn't have to die twice. Okay, yeah. I wish I had some Bible readers in here, Reverend Dow. He died once because he did not have to die twice. He was and is the sacrificial lamb. He he covered it all when he gave it all. Not only did he cover our sins uh, up to date, but he covered the sins of those uh, when he walked these mundane shores. And he covered the sins of those uh, all the way back to that garden. And so any and everybody that accepts Christ as their Savior, uh, then your sins have been washed away. You see, God did not have to die a second time. He don't have to die a second death. Only you and I will die a second death is pay once for a man to die then the judgment you might as well be dead if you go to hell because in hell there will be the weeping and wailing and the gnashing of teeth the torment will be throughout eternity he died once for our sins that's all it took his blood got us covered you need to understand understand that he died uh, once for all of the sin and all of the people secondly he died in my place. In other words, he took my place. It should have been me. It should have been you on that cross. But Jesus decided uh, that he would do it in my stead. So the sting of death will never come my way. The grave will never have me as victorious uh, because of what Jesus did. He died uh, in our stead. I'm about through. Y'all not catching it. The third thing is he died to bring us back to God. In in other words, uh, uh, you got to understand that God looks at you right now uh, as the perfect being that he created in the garden. And the reason why you can get close to God is because Jesus is sitting on the right hand making intercessions for you and for me. So my fault and my failure, Jesus got it covered. My wrongs, Jesus got it covered. When I ain't acting like I should, Jesus got it covered. When I'm actually uh, thinking the wrong thoughts, Jesus got it covered. In other words, because I accepted him as my savior, his blood has already covered what faults and shortcomings I already have. So in the eyes of the father, I am the perfect being. That's why I'm in the hands of Jesus. And Jesus said, as long as you're in my hand, can't no man pluck you out. So that's why every day I try to get a little better because of what God has already done for me. Every day I try to live a little cleaner because of what God has already done for me. Is there anybody in here that knows that he did it just for you out of all the people in the world? He looked 
down on you and my little pitiful plight and decided that he would walk with us and talk with us and tell us that we belong to him and then show us that everything he's done, it wasn't for him because he didn't have any sin. He did it for those of us that had sin. And I'm glad this morning that he thought enough about me to die in my stead. I'm glad that he thought enough about me to look beyond my faults and supply my needs. I'm glad this morning that God took the time to say, well, whatever ups and downs, whatever vices you have, I'm going to take them away. Just keep on walking in my footsteps. Just keep on following me like you should because sooner or later, somehow or another, the light bulb is going to go off in your mind and it's going to illuminate your heart. And when it illuminates your heart, you're going to see me in it. And whenever you see Christ for yourself, you change from the inside out. Whenever you realize that it's only God on your side, you change from the inside out. Whenever you see God for who he really is, then folk around you don't matter. Whenever you see God rather than your circumstances, you realize he did it for you. Is there anybody in here that can testify he did it for me? Uh, he bled for me. Uh, he walked for me. He talked for me. He died for me. And he got up for me. And because he did, uh, uh, and I'm out of here, y'all. I promise you, I am through when I tell you this. Somebody looked at it like this, and they began to sing the song, You Thought I Was Worth Saving. So you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping, so you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for, so you sacrificed your life. Why? So I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everybody I know you thought I was worth saving. I'm here to tell you that he done it for me. I don't know if he done it for you or not, but I'm here to testify that he done it for me. And I'm glad that he done it for me. I'm glad that he died on an old rugged cross just for me. A little old brown me, a little old nappy head me. Little old Bigfoot me, is there anybody in here that's glad that he done it for you? If you have yours ready, I saw two or three came across this morning. Amen. They paid their tithes, their giving card early. However you give, we want you to know we appreciate you so much. However you get your offering here whether that's Givelify, whether you mail it in, whether you give it to somebody that you know will be coming to the in-person worship service. Thanks be to God for all of you that uh, our virtual church that are viewing us each and every week that sends your offering in. Thank you so very, very much. We appreciate you. However you get it here, amen. As I say, it's not equal giving, but it is equal sacrifice. I'm not in your wallet. I don't know what you have, but I do know that God, if he gave you something to give, then we are responsible for giving what he has put in our hearts to give. So uh, if you have it, don't be ashamed. As we say, we are to be cheerful givers. We ain't to be ashamed of what God has given us to, to give. We ought to be proud of it. And so let us pray over the offering. If you got it, hold it up. If you give via your device, hold up your device. Come on, we want God to bless everything that we have in our form of giving. Lord, we thank you for the hands that's holding the offering that will be given in this worship experience today. We pray, God, that you would bless them in such a way that they would be blessed better on tomorrow than they are today, that, God, they would receive all that you have in store for them, that you would bless their going in and bless their going out, bless their home, bless their community, bless their job, God, bless everything that they touch. Now, God, I pray for the offering that is being given today. I pray, God, that 
if you will allow it to meet the obligations that we have here at the Breadgrass Missionary Baptist Church. God, we pray uh, that you will stretch it to the point that we can continue to run up the King's Highway, holding high the bloodstained banner of Jesus Christ, telling a dying world that there is a reality in serving a true and a living God. We ask all of these blessings in the mighty, miraculous, and matchless name of Jesus. Amen. All right, all of those on my right and your left, if you will stand and face the outer wall, those on my left and your right, if you will stand and face the outer wall as we prepare to receive the benediction. And let me say before we give the benediction, young Miss Lady Poe, Miss Lady Poe, young Miss Lady Poe had a birthday, was yesterday or is it today? Yesterday, amen. I think, I think you 12, 12 years old. Happy birthday, amen. Happy birthday to our young folk. Uh, we appreciate you and appreciate you being here. And such a beautiful young lady, amen, amen. She's so pretty, brothers. We got to get several shotguns to make sure that the guys come courting. They come with the right intentions, amen, amen. All right. If there's nothing else, uh, let's get ready to go. Oh, God, how we love you and we appreciate you for reminding us that we as a black people were covered even before you got to Calvary. So thank you for thinking of us in such a way, God. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, with the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, let it rest through and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And all of God's people said... This is a Beargrass Black History Moment, our World War I connection. Two posters entitled Color Man is No Slacker and True Sons of Freedom were circulated by the U.S. government during World War I to entice African American men for Army registration. Fighting for the cause of this country was not a new concept to African American men who had done so before there was a United States of America. At the time, Americans, black and white, were not eager to get involved in another war since the country was at peace. President Woodrow Wilson, while addressing Congress about the need for U.S. involvement in the European war, spoke of making the world safe for democracy. The irony was that Mississippi in America and many other states was not safe for Negroes, and the U.S. government was not making great strides to bring about democratic changes. Segregation was the law of the land. German soldiers took advantage of Americans' hypocrisy and dropped leaflets from airplanes behind lines of African-American soldiers, which read, To the colored soldiers, Hello, boys. What are you doing over here fighting the Germans? Have they ever done you any harm? Questions such as, do you have the same rights as white people in America, the land of freedom and democracy? They pose questions about eating in the same restaurants, riding on trains, and pointed to other American daily racial discrepancies. 
the Library of Congress has such leaflets. Irvin O'Bannon from our church history, a professed baptized believer in Jesus Christ, was at age 24 drafted into the Army and served in COH-801 Pioneer Infantry organized at Camp Zachary Taylor in Louisville. He was a musician, and when deplored to France, he took his portable folding pump organ with him, like the image shown. Joyous spirituals and hymns were sung at off-duty times. Irvin worked in the supply and service sector of the military, making sure that needed supplies were available at military sites during the war. His role, like others, held by many African American men serving in non-combatant jobs was highly important, yet played down or left out of American history. After the war, Irvin returned to Beargrass and was a church treasurer before he became an ordained minister at the church. He would marry and later become the pastor at First Baptist Church Ardensburg for a number of years. Further research will reveal other men of our church who served in World War I among the 350,000 African American men. Reportedly, 42,000 saw action and many lives were lost. When the men arrived home, there was no national gratitude for the sacrifices and services given. Only in New York City was the Army's all-black 369th Division, known as the Harlem Hellfighters, afforded a massive homegoing parade for their valor while fighting in France. Many of the soldiers received individual, individual medals from France, and from France, the entire 369th Regiment received the Croix de Guerre. Other soldiers returning home, particularly in the South, including Kentucky, found no such warm reception. The racial climate had worsened with lynchings and other forms of racial aggression had increased. The battle for equality and justice continued on the home front just as it does today. And yet all things possible through Christ Jesus. This has been a Bear Grass Black History Moment.